Updating VMware vCenter 6.7 to vCenter 7 Update 3C. Let's do it. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Hello, guys. Welcome to the Sysadmin Tutorial the YouTube channel. Today's video, as you saw in the introduction, we are going to be upgrading our vCenter server, which is currently at 6.7 Update 3. And we're going to be taking that all the way up to vCenter 7 Update 3C. So now up on screen, we do have the vCenter server that we're going to be upgrading. But before we do that, we are going to log into our base vCenter server. So let me log into that and explain what we're going to be doing. Now up on screen, we've logged into our base vCenter server. You can see the folder structure here and highlighted, we've got our vCloud director lab. If I expand that folder, you can see the virtual machines that consist of my vCloud lab. And the virtual machine that we're going to be concentrating on today is this vCloud 9 vCenter. Now this vSphere environment here sits within my base vSphere environment. So that's what's referred to as a nested install or nested environment. It's basically a vSphere environment within another vSphere environment. So before we get started, it's super important that we need to take a snapshot copy of this vCenter server, which we'll be using to roll back in the case of any issues whatsoever with the upgrade. Now to take the snapshot, I simply just right click on my virtual machine. I go to snapshots and I select take snapshot. Now we'll untick include virtual machine memory and we'll give it a name of vCenter upgrade seven. Once we've typed in the name, we'll just go ahead and click create. And our snapshots now being created. So we can go ahead over to the other tab here and this tab. So this is the actual vCenter server we're going to be upgrading. So it's called vCloud 8 vCenter. And we're just going to log in here with administrator at vSphere.local and the password. Okay, up on screen, we do have two clusters here. So we've got our vCloud 8 tenant A, and this is our shared cluster. So we're sharing these resources amongst the different organizations here. And you can see that we've got FitAid and Red Bull as made up organizations. They're not the real thing, so don't worry about that. We then have our management cluster. And within the management cluster, we have our NSX controllers. And then we also have the VCLS uh, virtual machines that take care of DRS and things like that within vSphere. Now to upgrade this vCenter server, because it is at 6.7, we can't do an in-place upgrade that will just upgrade that virtual machine. We do need to deploy another virtual machine. And to do that, we need to download first the ISO image for vCenter. And I've done that already, which is in this folder here. You can see by the file name that it is 7.0.3. And then you've got the build number there starting with 192. So all we need to do is simply right click on this file and select mount. Once that comes up, we go into the VCSA UI installer folder and then we go Win32 and we double click on installer.exe. Now we have a few options here with the installer. The one we're going to be concentrating today, you probably guessed it, is upgrade. So we'll go to upgrade and click on that. Now there's two stages for this deployment. The first stage is going to be deploying the new virtual machine into our base vSphere environment. And then once that's done, it's going to go to stage number two, which will involve copying across the data from the source virtual machine into the destination machine. And then it'll do a cutover. It'll shut down the source and then you'll have the destination or the new vCenter 7 ready to use. So here we'll just click on next and we'll accept the end user license agreement and click on next. And now we're going to connect to the source appliance. So the fully qualified domain name for the source appliance is vcloud8vcenter.vmlab.local. And we'll go ahead and click on connect to source. Okay, within the top half of this screen, we have the SSO username, which is administrator at vsphere.local. So I'm going to type in the SSO password for that account. And then we need to type in the root user account password for the appliance. So I'll type that in just here. Now on the second part of this screen, We've got where we need to connect to the source of vCenter server. So this is the vCenter server that holds this virtual machine. Remember, that's my base one, which if we go across to this tab, it is this vCenter here called vmvcenter.vmlab. And again, highlighted down here is the virtual machine that we're working on currently. So we'll go back to the wizard. Now we'll put in here the vCenter server name, which is vmvcenter.vmlab.local. 
And then we'll go ahead and type in the SSO uh, administrator at vSphere.local user account and the password. Once we've done that, we'll go ahead and click on next. We'll accept the certificate thumbprints here. So we'll just click yes. Okay, now it asks for the vCenter where we're gonna be deploying this uh, new vCenter server appliance. So our version seven one, and that is gonna be vmvcenter.vmlab.local, which is my base vCenter server. So I'll go ahead and type the fully qualified domain name right here. And then for the username, we're just gonna put in administrator at vSphere.local and type the password. Once we've done that, we'll go ahead and click on next. We'll click yes to accept the certificate warning. And here we have the folder structure of our base vCenter server. So remember we were looking at the vCloud director lab folder. So we're gonna place this new virtual center appliance into the same folder. So I'll just select that and click on next. And this is the cluster resource here. So VM lab, uh, this is from the base vSphere environment. And then we've got our four ESXi hosts. So I'll go ahead and click on next. Now it asks for a virtual machine name. So we're gonna just type in here, vCloud vCenter 7. And then we're gonna set a root password for the appliance. So I'll type in the passwords here. And we'll go ahead and click next. Now it brings us up to the deployment size. So in regards to vCPU memory and storage, we have a few options here, ranging from tiny all the way up to extra large. And you can see what those deployment options look like in the table below here. So from tiny going from two vCPUs, 12 gig of RAM, 579 gigabyte of storage, and really tailored up to 10 hosts or and or 100 virtual machines. All the way up to extra large where you can see 24 vCPUs, 56 gig of RAM, uh, 2283 gigabytes of storage, and suitable for up to 2000 hosts and or 35,000 virtual machines. Now this being a lab, we are just gonna leave it on tiny. The other option you can also do, or you can also adjust here is the storage size. So even though we leave it on tiny, I can change the storage size to large, and it does change the storage here to 1992. However, for the lab, I'm just gonna leave it on default and click on next. Now these are the data stores that are residing in the base of vSphere environment. So I'm just gonna scroll right until I get to the vCloud NFS data store. And here it is here. So I'm gonna be placing the virtual machine into this data store right here. So Synology 1815, vCloud 8, MGMT. So in the back end, my storage system is a Synology uh, NAS. So that's where we're gonna be storing the virtual machine. So I'll click next. And now we're gonna configure the network settings. So the network that I'm gonna be placing this virtual machine in is called Site A MGMT and make sure IPv4 is set here, static IP address, and the temporary IP address we're gonna to give to this uh, appliance is 192.168.1.222, and we'll give it a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, the default gateway 192.168.1.1, and the DNS server 192.168.1.101. Now the temporary IP address is only used because we're gonna be running the two vCenter appliances together. So it obviously can't have the same uh, IP address. And it just does that just so it can copy the source data across from the source vCenter across to the destination vCenter. After that, the original IP address that was set on the source will be set up on the destination. So we can then click next. You'll get a review here of all the settings that you've entered so far in this wizard. And if you need to change anything, you can simply go and click on the back button, make your changes, and then make your way back to this screen. I'm happy with all the changes or all the settings here. And what we're gonna do now is just click on finish. So it's gonna start the stage one deployment where it deploys the virtual machine into our base vSphere environment. And that's gonna pop up just on the left-hand side here, probably a little bit further down. Here it is already, vCloud vCenter 7. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time to deploy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video, uh, let this deploy, and then we'll resume the video once this is done. So I'm gonna pause now and be back shortly. All right guys, up on screen, we can see that stage one has now completed. So we'll click on continue. And there we see on screen here, stage one with the green tick, and we're now up to stage two. So we'll go ahead and click on next. 
Okay, the pre-upgrade checks are complete now. And we can see up on screen, we've got some warnings here. So most of them are self-explanatory. Just accept one that I want to point out here is this a duplicate service registration of the same type has been detected. Now I went through and had a look at the KB article, uh, which led me to another KB article and I'll put that up on screen. Uh, I had to go into the CLI and have a look to see if there was any enhanced link mode set up before or any duplicate services. Uh, I put in all the commands that it asked me to and I didn't find any duplicate services. So I am going to skip this and not worry about this warning for now. Just one other one, uh, scrolling down here, the vCenter server has extensions registered that cannot be upgraded to or may not work with the new vCenter server. So that's talking about NSX Manager, which is a prerequisite for uh, vCloud Director. Now I've already checked with the uh, VMware compatibility list and the NSX version that I am running, which is 6.4.13, is compatible with uh, vCenter 7. So that one is okay. So we're gonna keep going through here. The last one, the source vCenter uh, server instance is configured with more CPU cores. Now that's okay, we can add more CPU cores later uh, once we get this uh, all upgraded and everything like that. So I'm gonna click on close. And here we're gonna select the uh, upgrade data to come across from the source vCenter server. So I'm gonna leave it on configuration and inventory, but if you wanna bring across uh, events or events and performance metrics, you can then select those. It does require a little bit more space, but I'm just gonna leave it on configuration and inventory. Now down here, we can see that the default partition has only 3.2 gigabytes of available space. We do need to hold at least 4.07 gigabytes here for the transfer to come across successfully. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look to see what other partitions that we can use. Uh, to do that, we're gonna establish an SSH session to the source of vCenter server. So I'll do that via PuTTY and we're gonna log in here as root. And then we'll just type in here shell and then we'll type in df minus h. Now looking here, we can see that slash temp has 5.2 gigabytes of available space. So I think we're gonna use that as the temporary storage. So let's minimize this window. Down here in the export directory, we'll just type in forward slash TMP and then we'll go ahead and click on next. Now we're gonna leave join the VMware customer experience improvement program ticked because we need this for a Skyline. And so Skyline is a service that will go through and check the health of your vSphere environment. Uh, if you don't have that ticked, then you get a very basic version of it. So we'll just leave that ticked and we'll click on next. And then here's just a summary of our configuration that we've entered in so far. You do have to acknowledge that you have backed up the source of vCenter server, which we have with that snapshot we created earlier on in the video. And if you need to make any changes, once again, you can click on the back button here, make the changes and then come back to this screen. But if you're happy with everything, we can just go ahead and click on finish. Now you just get a warning that once everything has copied across, the source vCenter server will be shut down. So we're okay with that. We'll click okay. And now stage two is underway. So once again, this is gonna take quite some time. So I'm gonna pause the video and then come back once this has completed. So I'm gonna pause the video now. All right, guys, so stage two is now finished. So we've got some messages up on screen here about disables vSphere 7, disables TLS 1 and TLS 1.1. And also if you're using auto deploy, update the DHCP settings and update the TFTP settings with the new set of tramp files from the new auto deploy server. Uh, we're not using any auto deploy, so I'm just gonna click on close. And here we've got all the green ticks for the three stages here, or the three steps. And then lastly, we've got the starting page. So vcloud 8 vcenter.vmlab.local uh, port 443. So we'll click on close. And just down here on the left side, we can see that vcloud 9 vcenter is powered off and vcloud vcenter 7 is powered on. So if we come back over to the tab here um, and we type in our, oh, actually it's just gonna refresh itself here, okay. Good. <laughs> so that should come up with the web page. And let's log in with administrator at vSphere.local and just type the password. And there we have it. We have our vCenter 7 update 3C. We can verify that by clicking on the little help menu here and going to about VMware vSphere. And there we have 7.03.00300.
So what's left now is just to update the ESXi host from 6.7 to 7 update 3C. So we can see here that they are on still 6.7 and we can do that two ways. We can do it through the lifecycle manager within vCenter or we can just do an in-place upgrade with ESXi using the ISO image. But we're going to be doing that in a different tutorial to this one. So this one just purely concentrate on vCenter server 7 update 3C. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you found this beneficial. Leave a thumbs up if you like the tutorial and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.